Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Hamilton's great adventure? That's a great question. An adventurous question about Hamilton. This is by Fat Shark, which is possibly the best development company name ever. Well, I don't know, actually. It is fighting tooth and nail with bacon-wrapped games right now. But whatever the case, this is the same studio that brought you Lead and Gold, which was a third-person, class-based, multiplayer western shooter. Yeah. So, I really don't know what they're doing making this sort of Indiana Jones-style puzzle game thingy. Looking forward to trying it out, though. Before I go, on a word of warning. If you happen to have an unusual sound setup or multiple sound cards, this game probably will not work unless you disable all of your sound devices bar one and then set your sound to 24-bit, 48,000 kilohertz, which made recording this a pain in the ass, I might add. Most of the time, it's not going to affect you because you don't have that kind of hardware setup, but in my case, it was a nightmare. Okay, so I think we should just careen right into the game because that sounds like a very sensible thing to do. There is a how to play with 12 pages, which is evidently far too many pages, as you can see. It's also a bunch of stuff to unlock here. Not sure what any of this actually is, but it's padlocked, which means I shouldn't be reading it under any circumstances. Oh, yes. I will check the controls, though. That might be useful. Hamilton, WSD, Spyglass Boost and Mask, Activate, Gadget, Open Door. And I believe you have a bird, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Sasha the Parrot or something like that. Move, Taunt, Interact, Teleport, things like that. All sorts of crazy stuff. Camera controls. Yeah, it would be useful to know these things. Rotate left and right, in and out. Quick restart is the... What is that? I'm very curious to know what that symbol actually is, because I've never seen that before. Is that some kind of crazy Swedish symbol? I actually have no idea what that is. Is it a Mac symbol? I, I don't know, so I don't know how to do a quick restart. There you go. Your objective is to grab the golden key and reach the exit tile. Sounds fair. Also, treasure meter features a timer. When the treasure bar is full, all treasure on the level has been collected. Timed. Ugh. <coughs> Never like time stuff. Interactable stuff. Okay. I thought it was interactive stuff. There you go. Okay. Connections. Treasure. Taunts and enemies. Okay. So, taunt enemies with the parrot. And mystical dust and gadgets. Right. Okay. Should be enough to get started. Let us go. It is a puzzle game, so I wanted to at least know kind of how to play. Okay. Onward! Ah! ah! Okay. Not a huge amount of voice acting other than the screech of the damned going on right there. That would be a cat. Well, it's not really a cat. Good lord, look at the claws on that thing. That's terrifying. A bunch of cutscenes. <laughs> Hamilton. This great thingy. Yes, here we go. So this guy is Hamilton. Looking back on his great adventures. Of course. His only friend is a parrot. That's pretty sad. Forever alone. Okay. Right, let's have a look around. Right, so I can... Dramatically change direction. Huh, 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 yeah. And that brings up help, okay. So that sends the parrot around. Middle mouse button makes the parrot squawk. And right click does nothing remotely useful. Okay. Sounds reasonable to me for the moment. I sort of cartoony cell shaded, pseudo cell shaded anyway. Graphic style, it's pretty good. Hmm. <laughs> what? <gasps> Crazy ass parrot going on right there. Tell me more about your sweaty action filled hour. <laughs> well, that was easy enough. <laughs> well, there you go. So apparently, you don't get to play the game, it just plays itself for you. That's reasonable. I learned nothing today. Absolutely nothing. Huh? <laughs> okay. Right, so they got something. Some sneaky bastard came in. 
No doubt stole something very useful. There we go. Off he goes. He's bagging off. So he has, he's scarpered. Also, why is he wearing flippers? It's a murloc. He actually, oh my god, he is a murloc. I thought he was a deep one. That's me, as you can see right there. Admittedly, I do have more than three fingers, but there you go. <laughs> it is actually a murloc. That's brilliant. I love it. Right, so what are we doing exactly? I assume we're going to go and have a look and see what's going on here. We're over the Amazon jungle. Can we actually get a level? That would be good. Like, I'm not really sure why the first level didn't let you do anything. Did I skip it or something? All right, we're back in the rookie ruins. Right. What is this? I have no idea. All right, so that just brings up that information. Okay, well, we saw that in the first place, so I've already read this. The golden key. I've been told that this is kind of useful. Should I be collecting these things? I guess so. I can set the parrot to collect those things. I have no idea why. Can parrot open treasure chests? Apparently it can. Remind me why Hamilton's actually here. It seems the parrot is capable of doing everything itself. Hamilton's just gonna stand around like a lazy bastard. Up you go. Find me more purple things. His purpose escapes me. Okay. So Hamilton has access to gadgets. Doesn't look like I need to really use any at the moment. Well, that was dangerous and unnecessarily reckless. Why did we do that? Oh, space is open door. Right. There we go. And I am through that level. That wasn't exactly too hard. That's to be expected. Hey, it even gave me achievements and everything. And yes, this is Mystic Dust. I remember reading something about that before, but I can't exactly remember what it does, so uh, whatever. Right, well, you go collect Mystic Dust, I guess. In the meantime, I'm gonna grab some of these. Those will collapse. There we go. I'm gonna make sure we do those in the right order. Still not entirely sure why I'm collecting that, but hey. It looks good, plus there's treasure down there, so hey, why not? Let's have it. What a wonderful perfume by the looks of it. Yes, this treasure chest is full of Chanel number five. Ah, uh, Mystic Dust is used to teleport, and I have to assume it's probably associated with other abilities with the parrot as well. It's a mystic parrot, folks. What can I say? That's the treasure meter. Yes, okay, we're familiar with that. Kind of weird trying to figure out exactly what's going on. No, we saw that before. Why is it bringing that up again? Okay, I think I set the parrot there. That's why. Okay, there's the key. Oh my, I'm do... I'm a doofus. Yeah, of course, it's collapsible. That's actually kind of stupid, isn't it? Well, I think I have bust the level. And I don't know what the restart key is because they use some crazy character that I've never heard of before. C can it lift me up? I somehow think not. It's just annoyed. Right, well, I'm going to have to restart the level because I've balked it up. What a fool I am. No, you... Well, actually, it doesn't really matter, because I can do it this way, at least. That's not too bad. There we go. Go collect the mystic nonsense in the meantime, please. Controlling the parrot and Hamilton at the same time is a little bit fiddly, I have to say. It probably gets some getting used to. It initially does extend the learning curve a little bit, but it's, it's not a huge deal, certainly. Okay, which way to go? Well, if I go that way, it's going to cut me off, isn't it? What's the zoom out button? Well, it looks like I'm standing on that anyway. Oh, I could, of course, just use the parrot to pick it up, couldn't I? Could the parrot pick the stuff up? No. Right, I have to pick those up myself. Right. Well, the logical thing to do, I guess, would be that. There we go. Wonderful. I feel extremely intelligent right now. Not that I'm at them. I'm terrible at puzzle games, as you are well aware. And this is, without question, a puzzle game. Do not let it fool you. Mm -hmm. Some kind of monkey. Okay, I don't think we really need the storyline, do we? Storyline isn't really all that relevant. I suppose it's kind of charming, the way that they're delivering the story. I personally don't care, but it is something to consider. Hmm. It seems mysterious. 
That's a triggered door. Corresponding switch or lever. Okay, then. I also can't help but notice that looks kind of like a D-pad there. Is there a switch or lever around here? Yes, there is. It's up there. Go, my parrot! Inexplicably pull the lever! I don't know how you do it, but hey, you are a mystic parrot, so I suppose it's acceptable. Let's go around the right direction this time. Thank you very much. Okay, where's the next switch? Off you go. Find it. There it is. And then do we switch it again, possibly? Yes. Okay. It's reasonable. I can... You know, even my pitiful puzzle-solving brain can handle that without too much of a problem. I suppose we're going this way. Don't want to go around the wrong way. Cool! Wonderful. Yes. There we go. Let's not screw that up. I still don't know if I should really be bothering with all this mystic dust stuff, but hey. Excelsior! So why they're using that word, I don't know, but hey. This reminds... Star Trek pulps into my head whenever I hear the word Excelsior, I'm sorry. God, I even remember its registration. Right. I can't help but notice there appear to be fish signs here. I have to wonder why that is. Well... These levels are getting progressively harder and progressively more creative, which I certainly can't object to. Activated by stepping on something heavy. They have marker symbols for easy reference. Right. Okay. So, stepping on that does that. Stepping off it actually doesn't do anything, so I guess we can just run through that. Wouldn't make an awful lot of sense, I suppose, to have the parrot do that. The parrot doesn't seem to weigh too much. This way. Basic logical thought going on right here. Now... That bloody parrot. Where is the next switch? Can't sit on that. He doesn't weigh enough. There you are. Awesome. Fantastic. What a fantastic, wonderful parrot you are. This is possibly the best parrot, honestly. In terms of video game parrots, this one is pretty high up there in usefulness. Gotta say that. Something you have to consider when reviewing games. Just how useful is the parrot? In this case, particularly useful. I just have this horrible feeling I'm going to screw this up. Let's at least try and do it right so that I don't fall to my doom. I don't think you can actually fall to your doom. You just end up getting stuck and have to restart the level. And I believe that is that. There we go. This is a pretty charming game, honestly. It's quite enjoyable. I have to wonder how much longevity it's actually got. Certainly something worth considering. Right, what do we have next? Hmm. More interesting information. Ah, this is Collapsing Tile version 2. You can traverse it twice. Evidently you have to. Well, this one not so much, so I'm seeing one has a plank underneath it. I wonder how they precisely balance those. I have to wonder. And how long have these things even been here for, more to the point? You'd have thought they'd have rotted through by now. Well, there you go. Apparently not. Right, so you can cross that, and then you can go back, but you can't do it again. Because of course that would be terrible, heathen style. Okay, so that's all collapsed. I goddamn hope there wasn't anything important there. I guess not. Right, so you can cross that, but that will collapse. Right, yeah, I see how it's done. Alright, I can figure that out. Not entirely inept, only mostly. There we go. Awesome. Now leave. God, he... T Why must he insist on standing all of these terrible things? They seem incredibly dangerous. Alright, well, how does it... Sil... That's it, there was a diamond! That wasn't silver? What the hell does that even mean? Either that or it's some kind of ranking for the level. I assume it's gotta be that. It's like, is it silver? No, it isn't. <laughs> Funny looking bloody silver, I can tell you that for a fact. Okay, grab that, grab that, there we go. Everything seems to be timed, but I think it's just for score. I don't think you actually run out of time. As far as I can tell, anyway. Now, you can play this game co-op, which seems like it might be a good idea, because controlling the parrot and Hamilton together is kind of annoying. Plus, I imagine if you wanted the best times, you would use both together. However, it is local only, so no online. 
It would be kind of fun to play with a friend, but I say, unfortunately, that is the way that it is right now. And I am a complete bloody idiot, because, of course, that's what's going to reduce that. Hmm, so we go around this way. Grab all of this. There we go. Fantastic. Off we go. Oh, damn it. Well, once you make one mistake like that, you're pretty much shot to pieces. So you just have to restart. Ah. Now, I'm not going to complain about difficulty. Because, hey, it's not, one, it's not all that difficult on the initial levels, and two, difficulty's fine, as long as it's properly balanced. I don't know if I agree with the whole one mistake we start the entire level thing. Because I have to imagine that some of the later levels are probably quite long, and redoing everything would be quite frustrating. That said, the opposing argument to that is, well, it doesn't actually take you all that long to do it anyway, so why do you care? Which is a fair point. I mean, on these levels, you could probably do these levels in about a minute or less, so... I don't view it as a big deal. I Perhaps it might affect it later on, maybe, but I don't know that. Okay. All the way around there. Let's try and do this one right this time, shall we? Remember, that one will collapse the next time we head over there. Hmm, this is kind of the problem, isn't it? If I head that way, then I'm going to press the button again, which will make it rise up again. Huh. Ah! That... <sighs> Screwed that one up completely. Holding the button down in any direction is actually not a very wise thing to do in this game. Because if you run one square too far, it's actually better maybe just to kind of tap the keys like this, instead of just running unless you're very, very sure of yourself. But it is a puzzle game, it's not a platformer, so... It's kind of weird that it handles like one, sort of. Obviously you don't have jumps and things like that, but... At the end of the day... You do have to play it in a slightly different fashion than you might otherwise expect. I'm not viewing that as a fault with the game, I'm just saying this is kind of a little bit different. Right. So, as we were doing before... Hmm. So if I push that, that opens. I can go across these twice and twice only. I have a feeling I actually have to go this way instead of the other way. Because then at least I could go back to that once. Yeah, that seems to be the way to do it. Okay. Now feeling smarter. Up. One. Two. There we go. I, I actually really enjoy this kind of puzzle. More so than other puzzle games. Possibly because they're a little bit more logical. Less ridiculous. That's yeah, good. I mean, this is actually really good fun, honestly. It's got 60 levels in it, spread across four worlds. I don't think it seems to have any replayability, honestly. I mean, you can replay, but it does also have friend ranking, which will give you... So that's how many attempts I had. It calculated that based on time. I can right-click that to Freda, and by the looks of it, nobody else on my friends list is playing this game. So I am genuinely forever alone. It's just me and you, Sasha. Right. And I rank 160 on that level. So there you go. So, it's a fairly charming little puzzle adventure game. Now, I am told there are gadgets later on in the game. I would like to actually get to a level where that is happening. Just because I'm interested to know how the gadget mechanics actually work to see if they expand the game beyond what I'm currently doing. Plus, I also haven't found any enemies yet. This is just... I mean, for instance, right here, it's just stairs. Yes, stairs are stairs. That's cool. So, it, it is taking quite a while, maybe, to get to something really interesting. I think if I was to have a complaint about the game, it might be that. That, yeah, there are quite a few mechanics in the game, but it maybe could afford to introduce you to more than one of them per level. I don't really see the harm in that. He says as it introduces you to more mechanics. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of well aware of this treasure. That's fine. I already knew about that. Now, I did miss out on that, though, so this is actually the first time I'm going to miss out on treasure. Am I a completionist? No, because I like to get to the further levels to show you guys what's going on with them. No. I don't think I really need to bother collecting any of those purple things, honestly. Across there, let's be a little bit cautious, shall we? What's this all about? Right, it's the camera controls. I'm fairly sure I actually knew about that already, didn't I? Yeah, there we go. Ah! Oh. 
Well, that's that screwed up. I can't get that gold coin now. That's my own fault. Yes, mi misstepping is not the kind of thing you want to do in this game. Not at all. It will punish you hard for doing that. I can't help but notice my parrot stuck down here and not doing anything. Where is the switch for this? There we go. Wondrous. Now we're gonna screw this up. God, I hope not. I imagine we go this way. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, so I would like to see some enemies, because I want to know how that taunt mechanic works, and I've just lost the level. Oh, I'm such a dumbass! Must get the gold! Lose the level! <laughs> oh, it's so easy to screw up in this game. It really is. The harder levels, I have to imagine, will have you tearing your hair out. Oh, there was actually a hidden coin there as well. Sneaky little buggers. How dare they. Right, well, I'm not too concerned about getting perfect at the moment. I'd just like to get it through to the later levels and show you actually what's going on with it. Kind of the thing about first impressions videos, when you've got games that really space their mechanics out like this one, it's hard to judge as to whether or not those mechanics later on make the game significantly better. I mean, right now I still think this is pretty fun to a certain group of people. I wish the camera would work a little better sometimes on the parrot, it does tend to go ballistic every now and again and plunge it into the depths for no reason. But hey, not the biggest deal in the world. Right, okay. Let's get that sodding key. Grab that, because I know how to not screw it up. There we go. Wonderful. Don't really know why the parrot wants what's in that chest, but hey, you can have it. It's more that mystic nonsense, isn't it? I still haven't found a real use for that. I have to wonder if Squawk uses it. No, it doesn't. Huh. Didn't think it would, but... Excelsior! Oh, that was awesome! Right, okay. It wasn't Excelsior, because I guess I didn't collect everything. I'm disappointed. A transwarp drive is non-operational. It's a very angry-looking frog right there. Yeah, it's a shame we don't have any gadgets. Conveyor belts, yeah. Right, you know what? I'm actually gonna stop the video now, because I'm really, really curious. I'm gonna skip- go through a few levels without filming. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to try and show you what a gadget is or an enemy or something like that. And then I can make a conclusion. So if you wouldn't mind waiting, I will be right back. Okay, so I've got through a few more levels. And I have finally found one that apparently involves using the taunt function. I also learned about several new things like piranhas that eat you. And these conveyor belts, you can actually fall off the side of the level and die instantly. As it turns out... This game gets very unforgiving very fast. I mean, the game doesn't actually tolerate error at all. I think this is something you have to consider. The platform mechanics, whereby one of the platforms will just fall over once you stand on it once, and of course there will be another that stand on them twice, and then they fall down. Those mechanics prevent this game from being forgiving, because if you screw it up, you just fail instantly. It's as simple as that. You can die very easily, and you do die instantly. You don't have a health bar. Touching any kind of hazard will kill you. Being blocked off by a platform will, of course, kill you. More to the point, you just need to restart the level. So, it is an incredibly unforgiving game, but it's not trial and error. And this is what I like about it. It's very firm, but it's also very fair. It's obvious as to why you failed, and if you actually had any common sense and you thought it through before taking that action, then you would realize exactly why. There's, there's at no point where you turn around in this game and you think, well, oh, this game has just dicked me over completely. In reality, the game makes sense. It is fair pretty much all the time, far as I can tell, and as long as you don't screw up, then it is very, very rewarding. If you do screw up, on the other hand, then you'll find yourself restarting the level over and over and over again. Needless to say, that is not the fault of the game, however. Now, I think the interesting thing about this is that the game does reward you for going faster. You see that meter up to the bottom right? I believe that's involved in score and things like that. So, what you can have is people going through kind of speed running the game 
and I think that will give it some, maybe some lasting appeal. Kind of like doing portal runs and trying to do portal really fast. This game's kind of got the same similar thing going on. Okay, so I'm going to try and taunt this. Right, so that makes it turn that way. Yeah, so you can disrupt patrol routes and things like that, as you can see. Just going to wait for him to bugger off in this direction. There we go. Grab that. There is a diamond down there. I'm not actually 100% sure of how to get it without completely screwing the level up, so I'm just going to ignore it for the moment. As I say, it's for completionists, and that's actually good because I think a lot of people will want that. They really, really will in the game, and that does give it some last ability because it does have this completionist gotta catch them all kind of element to it. Obviously, I didn't do so well on this one, but hey, there you go. I was just doing it for the sake of speed to show you what's going on with it. But I think what they've created here is a very, very enjoyable, highly challenging, and extremely charming puzzle game. As in, this level will most likely... Not just this level, in fact. I mean, that level was pretty cool, but this level would give you the reason to go back and try it again to try and get a perfect score. And also, the game in general will make you do that. And I was actually kind of concerned at the start that it might lack longevity and replayability, but no, I don't think it does. Once you get to these harder levels, I think the game sort of drives you towards trying to be better at it. And that's good. It's got that portal element to it. It's the same reason why people played Portal multiple times. It's the same reason why you would play this multiple times. It's a very solid title. I really do like it an awful lot, and... It's a puzzle game, and I usually don't enjoy puzzle games. I actually did enjoy this, so I definitely think this is worth having a look at. It's by Fat Shark. It's currently available on Steam for... I think it's $8 right now, or £8, or about 8 or €9. Euros. I think it's... Yeah, I'm fairly sure it's $9, €9, Euros and £8. Pounds. So the Europeans and the UK guys get screwed over, which kind of sucks. I mean, I'm not entirely sure why Europeans are paying almost 50% more for one, a title that's developed by a European developer, i.e. Fat Shark, who is Swedish, and two, for one that's published by them. So I don't really know what's going on there. I don't know why that is the case, but it is. Bear in mind, not using Steam is often a good idea for Europeans. Gamersgate offers this at the same price as Steam, but it offers dollar price regardless of where you are. So you will actually get a fairer deal there. And let's just say that 50% more is not for tax. So I really don't know what's going on there. Once again, it's the whole Steam euros equals dollars kind of thing. And yet it doesn't apply to other retailers. Why is that? I have to wonder. Whatever the case, it is available over on Gamersgate for $9, and I would recommend that you pick it up there if you decide to go anywhere for it. My name is Total Biscuit, and that was Hamilton's Great Adventure, and it is actually pretty damn awesome, so it's definitely worth a look. I'll see you next time.